Good morning, and welcome to Sacred Awakenings. I'm Reverend Nicole Losey, and I want to invite you into our virtual sanctuary. This is a place we come together to serve, to study, to gather, and to practice. Welcome to the Sacred Awakenings Sacred Circle. Over the last month, two months, we've been exploring aspects of the divine that are masculine, aspects of divine and life that are feminine. And I hope that you were able to catch Dawn's podcast last weekend on Father's Day, celebrating fatherhood and the masculine. Today, we welcome Dawn back, and she's speaking on a topic titled Spirit and Gender, How Does Soul Create? I also want to invite into our circle John and Lori Lefevre Johnson, who will be sharing their gift of music. This is their personal ministry for us. And I hope that this helps you to go deeper inside yourself and connect with all of us here. Music is a beautiful way to connect. So welcome to Dawn Woodring and welcome to John and Lori. Welcome to each and every one of you. Hope you can settle in, sit back, and enjoy today's gathering. Let's take a moment to connect with our breath and set our intention for this morning's gathering. Take a deep breath. Feel your eyes close. Coming together, we create a collective divine heartbeat. We affirm truth and peace abide here. We gather to remember and recognize the divine mystery within. In our sacred circle, We honor the awakenings of each spirit who enters. A prayer from Gary Smith. O heavenly, divine, sacred source of life, open up my eyes 
to see your divine presence in all of life. Open up my ears to hear your guidance as I move through the maze of this life. Lead me to act in the highest good of all concerned. Open up my heart to set aside judgment and to find and act with innocence in all things. Help me to realize greater gratitude for the divine blessings bestowed upon me. See within my heart the intention to serve the glory of the divine in each moment of the day. Thy will be done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I raise my eyes to spirits and feel the warming light of mother's soft embrace and father's hand held tight. I stand tall and strong Embracing all that's true The life in me is soft and bold And deep and brave like you For a spirit is love A mother and a father A sister and a brother A daughter and What a beautiful message and song. Spirit is love. Lori and John, your love and your spirit shines through so much in this original creation of yours. I love that line. I know it's all inside of me where spirit's music plays. What a, what a wonderful contribution from both of you, of your love and your joy. Thank you. So today's talk is about gender and spirit and how soul creates. So what I share today may be a little different from what you've heard on this topic before. I'm sharing from what I first heard many years ago 
from teachers when I studied at the Aeroste Dictum Seminary. It piqued my interest greatly for I had strong, strong opinions about human gender experiences and I wanted to know more about soul and gender. So I continued exploring and asking for soul wisdom in this area. <clears throat> and I invite all of you to listen with a beginner's mind, with openness and curiosity, wondering if there's some spark of, of resonance that you feel within that calls you to explore your true nature more deeply. So the energies were opened earlier on the gathering and I'd like to take just a minute to allow space for you all to go within a little bit deeper. So connect in your heart. Just allow your breath to flow. Call forth, call forth that presence of you as soul, your divine essence, call it forth in your heart center. Allow your awareness of that which you always are to just grow and expand and deepen. You don't have to do anything, just allow it to be and breathe with it. So uh, just breathe. <laughs> so I'll start today with um, just a little bit about the human experience, then expand out into all of divine creation and then the individuated soul. And we'll finish with a practice where you, that you can use to remember and deepen your remembering of your own divine self. So as a human on this planet, there are social constructs in every single culture here that identify gender. It's differences, expectations of behavior, distribution of power and resources. It's a social construct, cultural construct. And most of them on the planet are binary. They have the options of either male or female. And there are some, mostly in indi indigenous cultures, that recognize other genders, multiple genders. They have their own native words for other genders. And some of the English terms that are used are third gender, fourth gender, or two-spirit. This is all how gender is understood in the culture, but gender identity is something that is felt deeply within the individual. It's that identity of gender within, and it may, or it may, or it may not correspond with the, the gender that's been assigned by the culture. It's each one's individual identity, and it's not static, it, that our own identity in all areas, including gender, can change throughout the course of our lives. There is so much information available today online and books and podcasts and blogs, everything. You can find so many places to explore gender and how it's changing and what's new today and and what gender identity is and how people are coming forth and especially youth are coming forth and breaking out of traditional and limiting labels. Have conversations about it with friends, family, loved ones. Open up to the wonder. But today, let's go forward with the divine experience of gender and what that might be. Divine creator encompasses all of this, all these expressions and beyond, like Laurie's saying, it's both 
male and female and yet transcending both. In the divine, all expressions of gender and identity are celebrated. Spirit as infinite creation, as divine creator, the source of all, God, goddess, Godhead, all these names and yet none can truly capture the essence of this energy. It's the foundation of all there is. It's the isness, the beingness that envelops all creation, winds through all life everywhere. It's that everywhere, including ourselves, that that spark of divinity within. So is there gender there too in this vast isness? Of course. Absolutely. All possibilities, all expressions are contained in divine, in divine wisdom, in divine expression, divine spirit, infinite possibilities. We as humans, we try to understand through what we know and and even messages that come in from the divine, they'll come in to us in ways that we can understand in our brain. So there's a translation piece that happens. So our brains understand it as mother God, father God, divine feminine, divine, divine masculine. These are ways that we use to describe the energies that are present. And we've been exploring all these many ways the divine feminine and divine masculine energies are expressed. We've been exploring them in Sunday gatherings over the last two months here. So let's go a little deeper, a little different aspect today. What about each one of us as a divine evolutionary soul, as, as an individuated piece of creation. How is gender expressed in our souls and in our individuated divinity? So in soul, what would be distinguished as gender? It's more like a function, a focus, a way that we work with energy and creation throughout all of the cosmos and of course here on earth too. There are souls who work with superstructures of energy, and those are the male souls. And then there are souls that work with creating and weaving life in and around those superstructures, and those are the female souls. These words, male and female, were used to help our, our minds understand and begin to recognize this way of creating that we naturally know beyond our brains. But it's not gender in the human cultural sense. It's not a delineation of identity or hierarchy or possession or attachment. Those are all characteristics of a human life in a world of duality and harm that we've been in here. So whereas the words male and female are useful to distinguish and understand how these two energies uh, express and work together and complement each other, there aren't the limitations or expectations on them like we find in human constructs. Both male and female soul energies, they're both needed for life. The, the energy that creates the structure and the energy that creates and weaves everything about life around these structures. Both are integral, like the yin and the yang. Both are present throughout all of life and throughout nature. And they interact seamlessly. Souls come together, they engage freely and know the value know the truth of each one's contribution and each, each one's co-creation. Mm -hmm. 
at each, when we were all born at our creation as a soul, our divine first creation, when we were brought into being, we were made in the energies of love and compassion and joy. And we each also had either the masculine energies that create the superstructures or the feminine energies that create life around the structures. As an individuated part of the whole of creation, we as evolutionary souls were given the gifts, the divine gifts that can never be taken away or not a part of this, these gifts of free will choice and the power to co-create. And from these essential energies and from these gifts, we explore and we express ourselves within infinite possibilities of creation. So when we as a soul come to have a life here on earth to expand our wisdom, our love, our joy, and help evolve the whole planet, we're not limited by our soul's gender. So some may be, someone may be a masculine soul and choose to evolve and contribute from a life experience of feminine gender identity. Or someone may be a feminine soul and decide to come here and create a life expressing as a transgendered man. Possibilities are a soul, I mean, they're just endless what a soul can, possibilities of, that a soul can create. I mean, it's, can, and someone can be a masculine soul and in a very masculine life and body. There's no, anything, anything's possible. So as un- Seeing humans, we walk around believing our imposed identities, expectations, and behaviors that we hold for ourselves and others. We pretend to be separate men, women, separate colors, shapes, sizes. And this is important. It's an important step in our human development. It supports our experience of autonomy and it leads to a sense of our identity, our personal power, our maturity and our growth, our evolution. I mean, we did come here to have human experiences. There's, so there's nothing wrong with any of them. It's why we, we are here. And all that is a part of it, but, and not even a but, <clears throat> And there are more and more and more of us who are waking up more souls on the planet who have chosen to come here and evolve beyond that human identity. Those people feel this inner inclination to want to know the essence of who we are. What's inside? What's that individuated divine nature that is both whole in and of itself and also a part of the whole of creation? One of those beautiful contradictions that I just love. <laughs> when we see ourselves and when we see each other as soul, those needs to label, to identity, identify, to box in or keep small, they just, they just don't have, they just don't matter so much anymore. Because when we're seeing ourselves as soul and each other as soul, we know, excuse me, we know ourselves as unique individuals. We know our talents and our masteries and we know the wholeness of the entire creation, all of the cosmos is incomplete without our presence and our contributions. Everyone matters. 
soul, unlike many human experiences, soul is not driven by personal power or personal drive or even personal desires, really. But it's that innate integral knowing that he or she is a contributing part of the whole. It's all about service to the whole of creation and that each one of us is an equal part. It's just, it's our essence. It is in every, every choice, every moment, every breath. A drive that we feel from soul, that inner drive to express, to create all of those things that are coming from our joy, from our love, that inner, it feels like an inner explosion sometimes. It just wants to come out. It's, it's for our own evolution, yes, but it's not separate from the whole of creation and it's not separate from the evolution of all life. It is one and the same intertwined. So uplifting oneself, expressing your joy, expanding your love, your wisdom, your compassion, it expands all of creation, always. We are each valued contributors and we never, ever, ever exist alone. We are all connected in this whole beautiful all beautiful fabric of creation. So all of us in our own ways, whether we're male or female or, or uh, a younger soul who's been around the block a few times or one who has been around for <laughs> a long, long time, all of us create with divine energy and we use colors and tones and geometrics and light and vibration and thoughts and words and actions when we're in a body on a planet. We're all evolving, always, along with all life evolving. And when we're on this planet, the planet is also evolving and everything we do steps it forward. No one no matter what you may think from the human mind or of yourself or anyone else, no one here is on the sidelines just watching. We all participate in the creation of all around us, every moment, with our choices, our creations. And soul is always aware of this and always engaged, even when the human's asleep to it. <laughs> what happens? Or what might happen? Here's that curiosity and wonder piece. What might happen if you got more curious to know all about what soul is doing when you're going about your human life not remembering? What would that be like? So I invite you all to a practice with me at the end to explore this a little bit. So, you're sitting. Put yourself in a position where you can be comfortable for a little while. Connect in your heart. Feel that presence of you that's always there. never failing. Allow that presence. It's you as a divine, sacred being. Just allow it to come forth. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go digging to find it. Just allow the quiet, allow the stillness for it to come forth and lay aside in your mind any expectations or anything you think you know already, just let that presence of you as soul expand. Hmm. It 
may feel like a deeper stillness or a quietness within. It may also feel exhilarating and effervescent, so exciting. You may hear tones or sounds or words. You may see colors, images or waves or lights. You may see geometrics and shapes. Whatever it is, just allow it to be. Welcome it. Treasure it. Treasure what comes forward. Treasure it as the jewel of your own wisdom being shared in your consciousness. You may wish to stay here and just be in this presence of you. You may ask a question. You may ask to know what your soul gender expression is. Whatever your choice in this moment. And be quiet for just a few moments to allow this to expand and I will call you back. Okay, gently come on back. And you can go back and listen to this recording or do this practice on your own, but invite yourself in, invite that remembering into your consciousness. Thank you all for your presence.
in considering our message, our music, our meditation, and all that Sacred Awakenings offers the community that gathers. We ask that you consider a love offering or energy exchange at our website, sacredawakenings.org. Please join me in this blessing. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Divine love, through us, blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, and all that we receive. May your generosity you share with Sacred Awakenings continue to bless you with divine abundance and prosperity. Thank you. I would like to invite you all to our time of community intentions. Bring forth in your heart, in your awareness, anyone who you would like to share in this community intention and this blessing from love. You may just see them or imagine them with you or say their names out loud to anchor in this energy of divine intention. Hold the space for you to share your own intentions along with this, and I will speak some aloud as well. May each one know the beauty of their soul expression. May each one feel the freedom in divine presence. May each one feel the love, the compassion, the joy of the divinity held within each person, all life. May you go and travel and explore with grace and ease in joyful jubilation of soul. So be it. Thank you, Dawn, for your inspirational message. May your subjects settle into ourselves and take us deeper into an understanding of spirit and gender and creation. And thank you to John and Lori for sharing your gifts of music with us. It's always a joy to hear you play. I invite you to stick around after our gathering today and participate in our talk and join us next week. You can re-listen to our podcast um, or you can re-watch it on YouTube or Facebook. You can catch it on the website. There are many, many ways for us to stay connected, and there are many other ways that are coming in the near future. So please stick around for all the latest news. May you experience sacred awakenings each and every day. Bless you.
Let's take a moment for a short break. You can get up, you can move around, you can use the restroom, you can grab a coffee or a snack. Come back in about five minutes. We'll begin our discussion of the topic and Dawn will be available so that we can go deeper into it and we can see how things settle in and sit with each and every one of us and also make some plans for how to carry that message into the week ahead. Georgia will begin the discussion, like I said, in about five minutes or so. So please come back and um, we'll take a deeper dive. See you soon.